All right, time to talk some LSU football. The way we do that here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, is we bring in Lon Phillips Sullivan from LSU Odyssey. Lon, how are we doing tonight? We're doing great, Mark. How about you, my man? I'm good. Thanks for pumping some life into it here. Here we go. So unfortunately, we stay away from from the, the, the fine greeting to some unfortunate news along the recruiting path. But we can at least spin that on a positive because I'm looking at the 2021 list of football commits at LSU, and I see the second best class as it's currently ranked by 247 Sports in the SEC, number two in the SEC, number three in the nation, but some D commits to report. Absolutely. Big Anthony Hundley out of IMG, huge defensive tackle, brilliant versatility, had an inter- one handed interception he almost took back for a touchdown this year. He was a huge uh, fortified piece of Orgeron's defensive line, one of the earliest commits of the 2021 class and one of the staunchest supporters and social media posters of LSU content. He decommitted, and uh, he announced that, I guess it would be two days ago now, two nights ago, and it was a very shocking move. Um, And we're not really convinced it was... uh, Anthony's um, Anthony's preference to, to leave LSU, actually. And on top of that, today we got a big, even bigger shocker. Naquan Brown, brilliant edge rusher, phenomenal edge rusher. I, I see him, you know, transitioning as a more of a linebacker in the SEC out from defensive ends. He's a little bit more undersized, but he's so fast, so quick, such a great finisher in the backfield great anticipation he he had a bunch of friends on this on this lsu 2021 uh, commitment group or or even just amongst the recruits he was very popular a huge uh, team guy big friends with rayshon davis as well the the linebacker the best linebacker in the 2021 class who's a lsu commit race john and him were very tight and naquan was it was also uh, he was also decommitted today, and um, I, I kind of said it like that because it wasn't really was also decommitted because it wasn't really from what I've been hearing was not his decision completely that his preference was he wanted to play LSU, and it's causing a lot of ripple effects um, through the recruiting world and through LSU. Not only you know Terrence Lewis decommitting from Tennessee, you know. Armani Goodwin decommitting from Auburn or, you know, the whole list of, of decommits going on. I mean, Texas, <laughs> I mean, we could probably, probably, you know, put like 15 names right there, but uh, for LSU specifically, decommitments is a very rare thing. I mean, Jacoby Stevens, he, he famously decommitted back in 2017. He came back to the fold. A decommitment does not mean the end, you know, for all we know, Naquan Brown said, okay, I'll decommit now so we can open that spot, get someone in here, and then we can gray shirt somebody, and then I'll come back to the to the fold uh, later. I mean, Orgeron knows every trick in the book. He knows every uh, way around the system and how to do it legally. Um, he knows he knows everything about recruiting. And I, I feel like if he were to really have dismissed Naquan Brown in such a way I feel like it would be a huge misstep by him. If that was a a processing by Coach Orgeron, I have no problem saying it to my favorite coach. I think you got that wrong. I think you processed the wrong player. Not only is Naquan Brown a special athlete, he's a special character as far as a locker room guy. And with the Tiger turnout uh, event that went down this late summer, um, he was a very popular guy among that group. Uh, everyone I talked to for, from the Tiger turnout, uh, they raved about Naquan. And so it was really shocking news to see his decommitment today. Naquan Brown is the sixth rated player in Virginia, according to the 247 Sports Composite, 16th rated weak side defensive end, uh, number 224 in the nation, regardless of position, again, out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down the game we love. Best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the nation joining us each and every day. 
And that usually develops into the best discussion, debate, and analysis right here. So please lock it in, subscribe, hit that bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live. LSU, a 29-point underdog at home against Alabama. That's what it is, 29. And uh, reminds me of a score from two years ago. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, oh, Mark. and that was a Mark. much better LSU team. That was a much better LSU team. A, a top 10 team that won the Peach Bowl still lost 29 to nothing with Joe Burrow at quarterback. Uh, little did we know on that night that we were looking at uh, the most prolific quarterback in offense in the making just one year later. But here we are another year later and uh, a very capable quarterback um, steps in and Miles Brennan throws 11 touchdowns against three picks, but he goes down and now we've got this quarterback battle of sorts. I guess we could call it a battle, a competition, a back and forth uh, that sets us up for the last couple games of the season, which LSU's task will not be easy on Saturday night and it's not easy the rest of the season. Uh, much of what we saw uh, this past Saturday night and trying to get some points on the scoreboard in the final minute against Texas A&M. So your thoughts about uh, the two quarterbacks in play and what we can look forward to in 2021, Lon? Well, what I'll be watching for on Saturday uh, for these quarterbacks is how they can throw under the under pressure, obviously how they, how, how the game, how the event, how the spectacle of it all gets to them, or if it doesn't. I want to see who's the most confident, who's the most poised out there, who's ready to beat Alabama. I, you know, obviously, we're probably not going to beat Alabama on Saturday, but I want to see players out there playing the game as if it has a consequence, as if it matters, as if every play they make whether it matters or, or not for LSU, it matters for your personal pride. You know, I want to see Tigers out there giving everything for 60 minutes. For, I, I, I want to see pursuit. I want to see endless, uh, brilliant hits. But at the same time with the quarterbacks, just don't make a mistake. Just don't kill the game too early. Give us a chance. I want to see good third down completions, at least a few of them. I want to see some patience with the running game. I want to see checks at the line of scrimmage. I want to see identification of those blitzes. I want to see, you know, you notif you recognize that that safety is just a slight, he's just, he's just moving just a little bit more to the right, and you make that dagger throw right into that space. I want to see passes into space. I just said the word space. Too many times these quarterbacks are not throwing into space. Too many times these quarterbacks aren't leading guys into an area away from defenders. Too, too many times they're throwing guys right into hits. I want to see just that completely end. But more than that, I want to see them communicate with that offensive line and get that offensive line to improve themselves. I want to see them will that offensive line back to some sort of semblance of the Joe Moore award-winning group that they were. Um, granted, they did lose four of the five starting offensive linemen from that Joe Moore award-winning unit. So you can't really call it the same unit, really. Um, that's why someone like Tristan Lee is so important because he, he could start right now for LSU. Um, but what I want to see from the quarterbacks, and I don't, I, I think Max Johnson will probably be starting on Saturday. I think that's who they'll be going with. With Max, I want to see, I want to see his arm. You know, we, I know he can run. I know he's shifty. I know he's elusive. I know he's going to take some big hits against Alabama. I want to see him a hold on to the football. I don't want to. I don't want to see him, you know, fumbling the ball around there. But I want to see him make some big, tight throws to Eric Gilbert over the middle. I want to see the return of the crossing route that just killed teams last year. It, that's the thing that's sad without Terrace Marshall in this game. Is there isn't an alpha that's really proven that can carry LSU on their shoulders? Eric Gilbert is probably that guy, and he could probably do it but we haven't seen him put in that position yet. And frankly, we got to move Cole Taylor next to the left tackle or the right tackle almost all game while Eric Gilbert's out wide. We have to give the O-lineman some type of protection because when we're doing the five down 
that's five down and the empty. That I mean, we're just going to get slaughtered doing that. Against Texas A&M, they destroyed us in the five down and empty. We had no chance running those plays. I don't even want to see those packages in the playbook on Saturday. This game is going to be written off by a lot of people. A lot of LSU fans didn't want to play this game. A lot of LSU fans were cowering from this game. And I'm going to say something to these LSU fans. That is not being a true Tiger. That is an embarrassment. It is pathetic. We back down from no one, least of not Alabama. This game means something. It may not mean anything for 2020, but it means a sure a hell of a lot for 2021. I want to see who's out there making plays, who's out there who isn't going to – the buck stops with them. You know, some. I want to see that type of attitude. Whether they lose – whether they win, whether they lose – I want to see the performance just like I saw last week, that 20 to, to 7 performance against Texas A&M, where that defense would not give in. How many horrible fumbles, turnovers, ho- hit, just hideous mistakes LSU's offense and special teams made, but yet that defense held every single time like like the wall of Braveheart, like just like a bunch of mooning asses, just, just oh, come dare thee to stop us. I mean, that defense, were they were brilliant. They've been mocked all year, ripped on to pieces, ripped to shreds. Bo Pelini, you know, basically fired, you know, already in the imaginations of every LSU fan. And somehow they hold the best third down team to two of 16 on third down, a collective two of 26 for the last two opponents. Brilliant play from the defense. I want to see that again against Alabama. When, whether we win or lose, I want to see us knock the snot out of Mac Jones. How dare they compare him to Joe Burrow? I want to see our defense humiliate, embarrass, and bury him whether we, whether, whether we win or lose. Whether Mac Jones throws five or six touchdowns. I want to see us shut him down and destroy him in the backfield. I want to see our defensive line absolutely clatter embarrass and demoralize Mac Jones. So this is what I like to hear because we're at the point in this season and this happens to a certain extent every year, but especially in this COVID ravaged season where I'm hearing fan bases all over the place. I'm not hearing it from players or coaches, but it might be running through some of their minds, but of course they're not going to state it publicly The give up mentality. We don't want to play that game. We don't want to play this game. We don't want to see that team. We're Florida State fans. We don't want to see Clemson. We're Michigan fans. We don't want to play Ohio State. We're going to get killed by seven touchdowns. That is a loser's mentality. Don't you want your team to go out there and fight and compete? And even if they walk off the field 52 to 10 losers, that they were that they showed up for the game. They were there when the ball was teed up to be kicked off and they showed them self to be competitors. And for Ed Ogeron and his staff to go out there and to see who really wants it on national TV, a primetime game on CBS, who doesn't want to be embarrassed? Who wants to, and even if they walk off the floor, and even if Alabama is a big winner on the scoreboard, you want those Alabama players to walk off the field and feel like, man, that team, they showed up and they hit us in the mouth and and we got a lot of respect for them, even though the score looks pretty good for us. Wow. We, we've been through a dog fight. Exactly. Like I, I don't, I, we are lucky just to even have football right now. The pandemic is worse than it was back in March. And I mean, we are lucky just to even be seeing these games and yet people are crying about not, I don't want to play Alabama. Like, are you serious? Like, we shouldn't have even had this season. We are lucky to be watching football at all. So I'll take it over and over nothing. But here's the thing. Mason Smith, Corey Foreman, Tristan Lee, Race John Davis, the number one linebacker in the country, Brian Thomas, these are the guys who are going to be paying the most attention on Saturday night. Those are the guys... LSU needs to perform for if you're not going to perform for the season or for some, you know, fic, you know, we have nothing to play for if in, in means of college football playoff championship, that's all long. I mean, that ship has sailed a long time ago, but 
there is so much to play for because 2021 could crystallize as a 2019 repeat if we can just get the right players in to finish off that class. That class is so close to being so finite and so brilliant combined with the players who will return for LSU next year. <clears throat> you got Derek Stingley. You got Kayshawn Boutte at receiver who made that brilliant catch. You got Eric Gilbert, the best tight end we've ever seen. You've got Jacoby Stevens who will probably return for another year. Jabril Cox will probably return for another year. Uh, B.J. Ojolari on one side. You could literally have a defensive line next year of B.J. Ojolari, Mason Smith, Jaqueline Roy or Jacobian Guillory, and Corey Foreman all in a front four. That would be absolutely devastating. I mean, just think of that. Mason Smith, Corey Foreman, Jacobian Guillory or Jack Jaqueline Roy, and B.J. Ojolari on the same defensive line, and that's just the starters. And then you got Race John Davis behind him. And then you got Greg Penn at linebacker as well. And then you could get, I mean, the list goes on. Philip Webb hasn't even played a down for LSU, and he's a brilliant player. J the same with Devontae Lee. He's another brilliant player. There's so many undiscovered gems on this 2020 LSU team that I want to see them against, against Alabama. I want to see Josh White, number 33, out there smacking people in the mouth. And you said it, Mark. That is a loser's mentality. That is an embarrassing mentality for a team that just won the 2019 championship and just like absolutely rubbed it in everyone's faces, you know, absolutely just destroyed everyone on social media. We're LSU pounding our chest. And then seven months later, I don't want to play Alabama. That is embarrassing. That is pathetic. That is not LSU. You are not an LSU fan. If you did that, luckily 99.9% .9 of LSU fans want this game. Because the other thing to keep in mind, as you well know, is that while Alabama is playing lights out against everyone in embarrassing teams that they have no extra incentive to embarrass, that's not the case Saturday night. This is the team that even though LSU rolled to a national championship undefeated, even though they played the toughest schedule in the country and knocked off top 10 opponent after top 10 opponent, there was a five-point game in Tuscaloosa that LSU jumped out by a 20-point margin, I believe, at halftime. And uh, they were the better team, but it was a it, it got uh, a bit uncomfortable in the fourth quarter, and Alabama made its run. It was 46-41. Had Alabama won that game, despite having a disappointing season by Alabama standards, had they won that game, they would have won the SEC West. They would have went to the championship game. They would have been in the playoff. And they came that close to getting there. And LSU, the guys that are going to be across the ball from them this Saturday night, that was the team. Even if they aren't the specific players, only some of them, those were the guys in those colors that took it away from them. So they're going to have a little bit more incentive on Saturday night. Oh, yeah. I mean, every, you know, well, there's probably a, every LSU fan hasn't even thought about it, but. You know, that it was destiny that that title was glued to our ring fingers, you know, and, and that's, of course, how I, I see it, you know. But Alabama is going to see it as that is our birthright to have won last year's national championship. How dare you have stolen what is ours with that ghost fumble and all that pettiness of, of LSU beating us at home and in front of the president and all this madness and the spectacle and the drama and all of it. But here's the thing they're going to come and they're going to want to absolutely just cheese grater our face. Okay. Yeah. They're going to want to go absolute hellraiser on our ass. They're going to absolutely want to destroy us. And it's up to, LSU up to completely lock that down, completely lock that down, make this game ugly, make it 21 to three, 21 to six, 29 to four. You know, I don't care. Four and a half. 29 to four and a half. I'll take that score right now, Mark. Four and a half. Just, just, just give us, just give LSU four and a half and I'll take it. But, uh, um, yeah, I just, this is a, this is a really weird thing for, for, for people, for fans to not want this game for, for fans to be scared of Alabama. I, I just don't like that. I know our players aren't, I know here's the thing, Alabama's players, you know, they're vengeful. You know, Saban's going to want to, you know, put 80 on us or whatever. But here's the thing. 
LSU, we have a lot to defend ourselves. These players have a lot of pride to defend as well. I think we're going to see a lot of hard hitting in this game, Mark, from both teams. We're going to see a lot of just absolute bashing. But here's the thing. Alabama are going to make us defend the entire field. Can LSU do that? Can we defend every little quadrant of that field? Derek Stingley can cut down half the field, but he can't take uh, Mechie away. You know, they've got so many other weapons besides Devontae Smith. It's a joke. Najee Harris, even when he, you know, is only kept to 63 yards or something by AM, he still scored two or three touchdowns in that game. So even when you feel you like you're shutting down Najee Harris, you're really still not. So there's so many angles to this game that where LSU, you know, they're going to need to just ride this out and take it as it is. LSU fans, you, you need to get behind your team. That's, that's, all, that's all I can say. Get behind your team. Put some energy into that stadium. And, and who knows what can happen. That's why we play the games, Mark, because you don't know what could happen. LSU could upset Alabama, and I wouldn't be surprised because this is 2020, and crazier things have happened. And I, it would be nuts. But at the same time, Mac Jones is not Joe Burrow. Okay? And uh, I until Mac Jones delivers that SEC championship, until he delivers that national title, I'm not crowning him. I'm not giving him a Heisman already. Um, he, he's gifted with some great receivers and some great talent around him. He's, he's probably the most uh, high-octane Alabama quarterback we've ever seen, uh, outside of Tua, obviously. But I, I just feel like LSU's secondary is playing at a very high level right now. I feel like LSU's defense has been fantastic the last two games. This game is all about LSU's offense, offensive line, running game. Can we wear Alabama down at all? Can we even like keep possession? Can we take chunks of the clock away? I don't know, Mark. What can we do without Terrace Marshall in the passing game as well? There you have it from Lon uh, Philip Sullivan on LSU Odyssey. Lon, enjoy the game, and we will see you soon. Absolutely. One last thing. Race John Davis. The number one linebacker in the country. Believe it. Go Tigers, Mark.